when will they ban the use of the whips in racing? Right. Um, that's a, a rather emotive subject, and I know it's being spoken about later on, but however, we will deal with this. When will they ban the whip or the use of the whip in racing? Mark. Probably don't have a mic. That's the, that's the question, isn't it? Um, when did you stop beating your wife? It's, um, <laughs> it's a well-phrased question. Um, the, um, I think the uh, BHA have made an excellent stab at it. Um, why? I feel sorry for the BHA because they've uh, had a real go at racehorse welfare recently. And in the Grand National, you'll remember, they, they instructed the jockeys on a very hot day to uh, get off the horses if necessary in the finish and plenty of water on site and a very skillful way of going round the fences to uh, give the vets a chance to tend to horses who were injured and um, it, that resulted in an absolute outcry. Only three of the four horses who should have gone into the winner's enclosure at Aintree, only three made it, not because they were distressed but because the jockeys had followed the instruction. But the PR was terrible. And the same happened with going around the fences. So they unleashed a great tirade of uh, trouble on their heads, having done only the right thing for the horses. And perhaps it was the presentation that was wrong and, and the schooling of, of the officials and, and the professionals in the game. And the same has happened with the whip rule. Um, the whip rule now is autumn, almost accepted straight away. The, the, the site of racing now has completely changed in finishes, and it looks miles better. Um, however, they took a gamble to introduce it uh, just before the big race at Ascot to try and prevent there being uh, a horror, uh, because it was only in big races, really, that the old rule was abused, um, and they introduced it just before Ascot, and instead of taking away controversy, it highlighted controversy. Had it been introduced in November on the all-weather, probably it would have come in very, very quietly and everybody would have accepted it. The jockeys made it worse by only complaining about how it was going to hit them financially, so they came out of it very badly. So this excellent rule, which is already working, um, caused a furore which really needn't have been there. Um, I had a winner of a listed race the other day in, in Ireland and my English jockey Seb Sanders went over to Dundalk and uh, he approached the finish of the race in the same way that an alcoholic did the end of Prohibition <laughs> when, he <got> back, <laughs> when he got back to Ireland and it wasn't a pretty sight. Uh, it won a short head, and I was very pleased. Um, but this shows what a difficult issue it is. Uh, but the races already look infinitely better now. Um, and my criticism is that the BHA introduced an extremely good rule very clumsily, and I also would enforce it more vigorously. Um, I would take the race off the jockey if he broke the rules. And that would completely change it. And in my view, the BHA are not uh, man enough, if you like, to enforce their own rule. And I would simply take the race off the jockey. Um, that would affect everything. In the first place, at the moment, instead of the jockey thinking, can I hit it once more to win my race? He's going to be thinking, if I do hit it once more, I'm going to lose my race. So that changes that. Secondly, there's nothing to worry about from the point of view of penalties or fines. He loses the race. And if he loses the race, he won't do it very often. I can assure you, jockeys can count. When I send my man his retainer, he knows exactly how much money he should be receiving. <laughs> so um, I think a, it's a very simple way of doing it. And if I was them, I would just take the race off them and it will end the problem. As it is, they've given a bit of ground, there's a bit more muddle to go through, but in the end, it'll be for the good of everybody, and I applaud the BHA for doing it. I'm sorry that they've received unwarranted criticism for it. Uh, that was just partly bad luck and a little bit of bad judgment, but nothing that's worth having is attained easily, 
and I think it's um, every chance of there being a long period before people deem the current whip rule to be in any way excessive to horse welfare. So I would applaud them, but we're in, uh, at the end of a mess at the moment. And what are your <laughs> So, what are your views on hands and heels only, no whip? Um, well, hands and heels only um, results in the wrong type of horses winning. The very free horses tend to win the races rather than the horse who keeps picking up and picking up. And if you're going to have a whip, it wants to be in view. Um, I've run horses in Scandinavia, and there they have what seems to be a very sensible rule. You can only hit your horse down the shoulder with your hands on the reins. Now, at first sight, that sounds pretty sensible. And I was saddling up a horse a few years ago, and the trainer in the next door box, it had got blinkers on and was peeling it off about five or six wax <laughs> while he was saddling it up to make sure it woke up before it got to the trap. <laughs> so you're increasing, you're increasing, because man is endlessly inventive when it comes to making money. Mm -hmm. And if you have a stick, but don't have it in view, the horse will be more abused. You want it there where everybody can see, and you want a rule hard and fast, one over the top, and you are out. And that's the end of it, you know? You don't get your money, you don't get your race, therefore there's no incentive to do it. At the moment, the incentive to break the rule is always in the big races. They never did it much in the little races. So it's always the very day when everybody is watching racing, that the jockeys do abuse the rule because the race is a big race. So the very day you don't want it to happen, the very day you're in the public eye, that's the very day it happens. As soon as you take the race off them, that'll be the one day that it never happens. So that's what I would recommend. And I'm, I'm Two cautionary tales from my own rather um, amateurish attempt as a jockey, with or without a whip, if you see what I mean. Riding a finish was never an option in my life. I couldn't, simply couldn't do that without falling off. Um, <laughs> that, it, was, it just doesn't work. Uh, two things about my riding life. I rode a horse which, um, coming round to the finish, at, I think at Cheltenham, before we went up the hill, it tried very hard to go back up the exit. Uh, I was jolly grateful for having a whip. Um, that I could actually get it to the finishing line because otherwise the bit and everything else would have been through its mouth and I would have been down the chute. Um, but equally, I, I did actually ride the winner at this, in this particular instance at York and he won by a really surprisingly long way and I didn't move a muscle. And I was told afterwards, because if anything had come to me and I hadn't picked up my whip, I would, <laughs> I would have been sent to the steward for not trying. <laughs> uh, this is... <laughs> This is quite, it's quite an interesting definition of, of the impact of, uh, of the punter's view, if you see what I mean. But there's a, a again, it's having the, the range within your um, working environment to do what you think is right. And of course, Mark, what you're saying about jockeys losing the race, it's the owners and the trainers who also lose the race, which is the critical part of this equation, whereas at the moment it's only the jockey who suffers, and it's actually spreading the pain around, which makes it uh, m more logical. <laughs> the other thing that I think has perhaps not been made enough of, and I, you could argue there's, that's an issue as well, is the British Racing School's uh, impact on the way in which jockeys ride, and that this rather uh, um, extravagant <laughs> use of the whip, um, and the way in which they use the whip, is much better taught, thanks to the racing school's and the, and the technology they have in the racing schools. So altogether, that picture of, and, and indeed the whip design themselves, I mean, when I was riding, those whips didn't exist. And I mean, they, are, they make such a difference. But you, and equally, you could argue, as we all know, horses mark differently and respond differently. I mean, some horses never worth hitting them. They go backwards. Uh, some horses definitely need uh, something to wake them up and say, this is the time that you've got to put in an effort. Um, but the whip design in itself seems to me to have made a huge difference. But it wouldn't have helped me very much. I still couldn't have waved it about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so.